Hi, Woolen School, Mr. Anderson here. We're gonna try our first uh, video faculty meeting. Actually, we're getting two for the price of one. I'm gonna combine the February and the March meeting agendas all into one shot. <clears throat> so here we go. Um, on the budget for next year, please be mindful when a purchase order comes in. Let us know, do not, under any circumstances, throw away a packing slip. You will sign off on the packing slip. It'll be turned into Ms. Martinez or whoever's gonna handle purchase orders. Uh, so we can pay the companies. I'm sure if you ran a company and you sent the merchandise and you had to wait three months because we actually had a situation last week where the order was in for three months, no one let us know, and the company was a little irate over not being paid, and I think we can understand that. Uh, NJ asked test prep if there's any questions about that, either the language arts or the math, if people need materials, please see myself, Ms. Griffin, or Ms. Jogan. Instructional rounds. I would like to have between now and the end of the year some instructional rounds, teams. I know that we're able to get together um, when we are having celebrations for either birthdays or um, we say parties for uh, upcoming babies, uh, baby shower if you will. And we're able to get all the staff in one room at the same time. So what I'd like to do is have you take uh, one day a week and during the common prep time, get together with a team and do an instructional round. Go to another grade level and see what is going on in those classrooms. Again, this is an, not an evaluatory tool, it's an inspection tool so you to see, for you to see what's happening in the uh, other classes. So we can have some vertical articulation in uh, the alignment of our curriculum. Uh, HIV awareness, at least a minimum, twice a month, uh, you should be talking about harassment, intimidation, and bullying. And it's a golden opportunity where if a situation comes up in your class where there was a problem during lunch, or there was a problem during a special, or there was a problem in the hallway, for you to address that. And although we don't actually have the eight keys program in place, uh, many teachers still have the eight keys up in their classrooms. And um, what teachers do, it's very important that we inculcate values along with the curriculum. Uh, crisis procedures, we had a situation where a student pulled the fire drill after school and there seemed to be um, a small amount of chaos. What we'd like to do is, there's a fire drill after school, no one comes back into the building. We have to assume there's a fire. So clear the building grounds. The only thing I ask is that we not take kids out in the street, especially after school. We have a large amount of vehicular traffic. Simply move the students away from the building. Uh, we also uh, had a situation where we had a drill and uh, in February there was some snowfall and the cul-de-sac was blocked. So students were not able to uh, get past that point. Um, we have a, a, a phrase in the fire department, adapt and overcome. So if you're going down that way and you see that the uh, cul-de-sac is blocked and you can't have egress or the waterfront, simply turn your classes around on the other side of the street and progress up back to uh, Lewis Street. So we have to uh, look at the situation, situational awareness. Look at the situation, if you see a certain egress or path is blocked, um, guide your kids in as calm a manner as possible to a, a safer location. Uh, again, when you pick up your classes, please, please pick your classes up on time in the morning, 8.30 and drop them off on time and pick them up on time for lunch, not five minutes before lunch, and then picking up them five minutes after lunch. Uh, just a little reminder, I'm also gonna put this in the March agenda. All after school programs will stop on May 8th, including enrichment and NJS. And staff, please wear your IDs at all times when you're in the building. Okay, on to our uh, March information session. Uh, there's some safety concerns and recommendations, and this is going to relate to uh, school security. After school again, please make sure that parents know where they're picking up their children, both immediately after school and when the students are part of extended day programs. Uh, let the students know the correct pickup times. Remind them. Please do not open doors for anyone, and don't encourage students to open doors for anyone. If you see somebody in the building, not a staff member again, very nicely, if you feel safe to approach someone, say, may I help you? 
Are you lost? Can I escort you to the front office? Uh, when I'm walking around the halls with parents or visitors, whoever it may be, I'll always say to a passing teacher, don't worry, they're with me. So if you see somebody you're not sure about, if you don't feel comfortable, call the front office, call the security desk, call administration, notify us right away. And remember, close doors behind you. We've been very good about that since the last time it was mentioned, but don't leave doors open. Uh, when you're handling difficult situations with students, be very mindful of physical contact or the verbal confrontations that um, sometimes arise. Uh, please walk your students to their after-school programs. Take all your students with you for dismissal and then walk your students to their after-school programs um, so we can better monitor the noise and the hall traffic. Uh, we're doing a great job with attendance. Uh, last week, very good. As a matter of fact, Friday, I only had one teacher not report their um, PM attendance. AM was perfect and one person missing PM and I addressed that. Um, Remember to send your bus students down to 255. Again, for this month, month HIV awareness, harassment, intimidation, bullying. Um, our numbers are down significantly from what they were last year. If you have any questions about that, please see me. I have some PowerPoints related to it. Um, in reference to after school, if a child is not picked up by 310, I'm sure everyone knows the policy by now, that student should be delivered to the teacher's lounge. And uh, we have a procedure there where the parent has to come in and sign the student out. And that seems to have been working uh, very well. Uh, if you have any questions about the um, information you've seen in the video, do me a favor, just stop by my office. We'll try and clarify any questions you may have had. Whenever you see me do a video, it'll probably be in my sweatshirt. Otherwise, when I'm taping different parts of the video, you'll see me in one shirt and tie and a different shirt and tie and a different shirt and tie. And you'll say, what's this guy do? Does he change three times a day? No. But social media. Be very, very careful what you're posting on social media. Um, I always say forewarned is forearmed. If you put something on social media, not only will your friends see it, but there may be a few other people who may be viewing it. Possibly a few million people. So uh, be very careful what you put out on social media, especially related to the school, the school personnel. I appreciate your cooperation on that. Uh, next is common, what I call common courtesy. If there's any um, friction between any staff members, please come to the principal's office. Let's close the door and let's have a fantastic yelling session. And let's have everybody yell and air it all out. Please don't do this in front of kids. Don't do it in front of other staff members. Don't do it in front of parents. Because you know how stories can get uh, distorted. It's like playing telephone. Somebody says, this is what I saw in the hallway. It goes to the next person, goes to the next person. And I don't like the gossip. So if there is anything that needs to be addressed, do me a favor, please come and see me. Let's take care of that. Let's conduct ourselves in the building with a mutual respect for everyone. Your cooperation, that would be greatly appreciated. And the last thing we're gonna go over is the copier. So in order to do that, we're gonna have to go look at the copier because I'm gonna have to give you a piece of information. If the copy machine jams, do not, under any circumstances, open the paper drawer. That's the wrong way. Do not open the paper drawer. Notice I have a hand model present working with me. Hand model, please close the paper drawer. Open the copier door and turn one of the four handles. I'm going to zoom in. Okay, one, two. My hand model might have given away her identity. Three. Okay, four. Thank you. Do not open the paper drawer because I will show you what is going to happen. The paper, be the paper begins to feed and it's caught in the rollers and you open the paper drawer, here's basically what will happen. And this piece, when you open the paper drawer, it gets torn off. This piece will stay in the drawer. This will get caught in the paper rollers and that's how I end up with a jam and I can't get this out of there. 
So do me a favor, don't know if it does jam and you can't get it out by using the rollers, come to the front office. I always appreciate someone telling me when the machine jams. Last time the machine jammed, I was able to look up the person's number and I went and I addressed it with the person. Two other times the person told me, individuals told me, the copier jammed, I jammed it. We were able to take care of it. The other time it jammed, I didn't know it was jammed, I put my number in and it jammed immediately so the last person to use it was me, so technically I created the jam. But don't open the drawer if there's a paper jam and you can't get it out with the wheels, just notify the front office. If you open the door, it's going to tear off the paper and i got to call the repairman. Thank you. I'm here to address some items for the Wednesday uh, faculty meeting uh, for March. I uh, had nothing really to talk about in February, but in March I have a few things to tell you about. Uh, the first thing is hall duty assignments. Please be mindful of where your assignment is, and the assignments are in the morning and the afternoon. From the morning, you know, is 8.35 to 8.45, and from the afternoon is three, uh, 2.55 to 3.05. Please be aware of your stations. We don't want any accidents with the kids, so we're going to be making sure that everybody's on their call duties. Okay, the next thing is plan books are due March 31st in my office, and would you please make sure your plans are completed up to April 11th when we go on break. And the last thing I'd like to talk about are, are the bid orders. I'm having special meetings with every, every grade level and um, along with these SGOs, and I'll talk about that in a second. But the bid orders, what I'd like you to do is I'm going to, come to the, ask you to come to the meetings that are scheduled, and I will give you the main bid order. And then you will break it down according to your individual person, like whatever you ordered in the third grade, for example. I would like back by the end of the year in June individual purchase orders from you so that I'll, it's easier to hand out during the summer. So you're going to get the main one and then just break it down who ordered what on, from the main one. And um, SGOs we're going to be meeting. I'm going to give you a little report to fill out on each child on the projected growth rate and um, you have to upload that into Teachscape. So I'll explain all that you know more when we have our little, our little meetings during your, your common prep. That's all I have to say. Have a great day. Hi, this is Muriel and Lauren from the nurse's office. We just have two little important announcements to say to the staff this month. We're still waiting for the updated emergency cards. Please bring the original cards to our office as soon as possible. And next, we are doing vision and hearing screenings. Okay, we are finishing up the third grade, then we're going to go to second, first, and kindergarten. We're asking for your cooperation. We'll try to work around your schedule, but sometimes that's not possible, so please just cooperate with us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the news from the Sunshine Committee. We will be having a spring breakfast Friday, March 21st. Details to follow. Okay, so the big news for the AFT is that we're working together with the Perth Amboy Public School District and we're collaborating to come up with a literacy conference for parents on October 10th. We have several volunteers already in the building, but we need more volunteers. Uh, Laura Toto is running the, I can't remember what it's called, they're watching over the children. So we need, she needs volunteers. So anybody who could help Laura Toto to work that day to supervise the children, we would be greatly uh, appreciative of that. And that's basically all I have to say. Ms. Ackerman, I have a question for you. What? Did you, what is it? Did you by any chance send the... Um, don't! What are you bothering me for? I just I, want to know look, if you sent the two items. Two, no, I don't... Listen. I, I'll do it when I'm good and ready, all right? Uh, like, what are you going to do about it, huh? Okay? Okay, thanks mm -hmm. for your cooperation, Ms. Ackerman. No problem. All right. Thanks so much, and um, I eagerly look forward to uh, your comments about doing a, a video information session rather than actually holding a meeting. Thanks so much. No, Zonian, I'm ready. Are you taping? I'm going to address uh, the March. Uh, <laughs> I got tongue tied.